Hi everyone, David Mala here. Today we're back for part two of our uh, multiple logistic regression series. So this is pretty cool stuff. In part one, if you haven't seen it, please go back and watch it. That's where we ended up with this graph over here. We started doing some exploratory data analysis, looking into our data, looking into the uh, uh, how it's uh, specialized and uh, you know what our finite, infinite um, fields are and uh, how it's distributed. So uh, in this one, what we're going to do is we're going to create the training and test sample set. So I've got everything is right up here on the screen. You can see it right here. This is all the code we're going to use today. So first we're going to create the training set, and then we'll create the test set. Okay. So we want to make a model that we can have that's trained so we can use it on future data. Okay. So what we're doing here is we're creating our test or our training set. And uh, in this case, I have two elements. What that means is in uh, the field day type, right, we have day type A, which is this, and we have day type B. As we already know, if you watch the first video, it'll tell you day type A is lower crime days. You can all see it right here from the uh, leftover of um, the other day's uh, video. So if you look at violent crime right down here at the bottom, it shows you type a, or day type A is a very low crime day. Day type B is a very high crime day, and that translates into sales. We already found that uh, there's a link there. So type day A of low crime in this case means low sales, and high crime means high sales. But that's not for the whole store. Remember, this is for a type of product, right? So when we look at this, we have to have two of these, right? So we have to have data one and data two, and what we're doing is we're creating uh, – it's, this is basically filtering where it's A and where it's B. Okay, so that's what we're doing. So right now we have data one, which is only where it's type A, and data two for that test data one is our data frame. Okay, just so you remember. So we're basically taking our data frame where it is equal to A and where that specific field data type is equal to B. And we're putting in a data one and data two. Then we create a seed, set, set dot seed. We can pick any number we want. This is so it's replicable. So if we want to reproduce this in the exact same fashion, we use a seed. If we don't, then it you know, may or may not work the same way. Then, uh, we, in this case, I'm setting the training set to 75% of the data. So the training set is going to be 75%, which means the test set is going to be 25% of the data. Right? And 25 and 75 equals 100, so we have 100% of our data in there. So the way to do that is basically multiplying by 0.75 times the n number of rows and rows of data one. Remember, data one's the type A. And then we also have to do the same thing because we have two of them, right? So we have an A and a B, so we have to do the same thing of 0.75 number of rows times data two. And we're call this is creating a sample based off that for as many rows as it is. That's what this one to the nth row does, okay? For each, so I don't have to sit there and count and say, oh, it's, you know, 1,500 rows. Oh, it's 10,000 rows. I don't, I don't have to create variables for that. It doesn't matter how many rows it is. It's going to take 75% of the data and put it into training set one and two. Remember that? So we've got training set one and two. And then what we do is we put that in here, data one, training set one, comma, and then blank. And the same thing here, training set two, comma, and then blank. This will set it up correctly so we can R bind them together. So in the next set, what we do right here, the next step, is we take this training two and training one. See that? So what we're doing is we're going to take both of these, because remember we have A and B, and we're going to join them back together, right? Because we have to have the rows of the A's and the rows of the B's, right? That's, this is how you split it up to have 75% of the A's and the B's, and then the 25% the other. So what we're doing next is we're taking this training one and training two, right, which is the A and the B, and we're going to use our bind and put them together. And by using that and putting that in their training data, we now have 75% of the A's and 75% of the B's for that type date or day type. Next, what we do is the opposite. So see here where we did this training set one and training set two. Well, we already know that that's 75%. So if we do the opposite of that, we get the other 25%, right? So what we're doing here is the exact opposite. We're creating the test set, which is negative 
training set one and negative training set two, which means if we take the opposite of it, that's 0.7 or 0.25 times number of rows of data one and data two. It's automatically going to be that because it's the opposite of what those were. That puts that in a test underscore one, and test underscore two. So we know that it's not training underscore one or training underscore two. See that? And then what we do is we R bind same as we did before, but we're going to R bind the test one and test two. So that's training one and training two becomes training data, and test one and test two becomes the test data. So that's how it works. So right now you now have a train a correctly made training data set of 75% of the data involving both A's and B's because if you did it without that you might have too many A's and not enough B's and it would not be a uh, valid or it would be a heavily biased possibly uh, training set which we don't want. We wouldn't have equal of both, right? So unless there was a valid reason for not having that. Now the same thing with the test data. So we have a 0.25% test data. So depending on how many rows, if you had 10,000 rows, obviously this would have your 7,500 rows and this would have 2,500 rows in it. So that's how that would work. Um, one fourth uh, of the total. So that's it for right now. We've created our training and testing set and in the next video we're going to actually do some pretty cool stuff. We're going to do predictor values with two methods. And I'm going to show you how to quickly classify and uh, score data uh, with two different methods, so we can one is gives us the actual scores, and the other one gives you more of a visual of it. So it's quick and easy to figure out. Okay, these are the ones that are more important. These are the ones that are less important, and so on. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Please make sure you stay tuned and watch the next videos. There's gonna be five videos in this series, and also if you've not watched the first video, please go back and watch that now. Thanks again and have a great day and please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share. Thanks and have a great day.